Welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and this is all the Easter eggs, references, and little things that you might have missed in Obi-Wan Kenobi, Episode 2. The episode begins on a transport ship to Dayu, and anything goes planet where they deliberately block the Wi-Fi. All signals in or out are blocked. What happens on Dayu stays on Dayu. Screen Crush's own Matt Singer pointed out that the design of Dayu seems lifted from the concept art of Star Wars Underworld, the live-action TV series set on Coruscant that was never actually produced. There are a lot of Arabesh letters in this episode, which we're going to translate for you a little later on. Be patient, it's taking us a while. And hey everyone, look, it's Tamura Morrison returning as a clone trooper begging for money. Help a veteran get a war. Now his aging is accelerated, meaning that by the time the Empire is overthrown, he'll be an old man, like Captain Rex. Obi-Wan stares at him for a while, not just because he's a reminder of the Clone Wars and Order 66, but this guy is also wearing armor from the 501st. That's the Stormtrooper Regiment attached to Anakin that stormed the Jedi Temple and killed younglings. It's also weird to think that this old man would have been compelled to attack Obi-Wan if he saw that he was a Jedi. Now, I like this detail that the Empire is not taking care of their clone soldiers. The Channel Heavy spoilers pointed out that the show The Bad Batch has shown us how the Empire cast aside their clones because a clone army was too expensive to maintain. A dealer tries to sell him drugs. I guess he's got that look about him. You wanna buy some death sticks? She mentions a spice called Kessel Pure, and Kessel is a planet where spice is mined, like we saw in Solo and in the Clone Wars. And the other planet she names is Felucia, which we first saw here in Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> And by the way, that spice dealer is played by none other than Esther Rose McGregor, the great niece of Dennis Lawson, who played Wedge Antilles. And she's also Ewan McGregor's daughter. You know, the number one thing I'm looking forward to about this show is Obi-Wan Kenobi's rematch with Lord Vader. Oh, I wish I was a lord like Vader. Lord Doug, here is your treat. Lord Doug, here are the more treats. That would be awesome. Actually, Doug, you could be a lord like me. How come you're a lord? Because I bought one square foot of land in Scotland, which makes me a Scottish landowner. And according to Scottish custom, this allows me to have the title of Lord or Lady. Now I purchased this land through a company called Established Titles. They're the sponsor of this video. My land is on a private nature reserve in Ardeley, Aberdeenshire, and my purchase helps preserve their woodlands. That's a cool thing about this certification. It's not just a novelty gift. It helps protect the woodlands of Scotland. With every order, Established Titles plants trees all over the world through their charity partners, One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future. You get this certificate with an official crest and a unique plot number so you can see the exact location of your land. Then you will be allowed to officially change your name to Lord or Lady. You can have this on your credit cards or your plane tickets. It also makes for a terrific last minute gift. I mean, just look at some of these reactions. Lord Joe Green. Yes! Lord Kenneth Delane Albert. All right, hey, look at that. <laughs> You will be calling me Lord! <laughs> right now, Established Titles is actually running a massive Memorial Day sale. And remember, Father's Day is just around the corner. If you use the code ScreenCrush, you get an additional 10% off any purchase. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash ScreenCrush to get your gifts now and help support our channel. Back to the Easter eggs. This Arabesh sign reads Swartz, named after Star Wars producer John Swartz. And on this station sign, we see a navigational map of the galaxy that's popped up all over Star Wars. And there is a lot of Arabesh here that is blurry and hard to read, but we were able to make out all travelers must be cleared. Kamel Nanjiani plays a con man with a heart of gold pretending to be a Jedi, and he is great. This is a Jedi mind trick. Do not be alarmed. I'm inside your mind. He promises this family safe passage to Corellia, home planet of Han Solo that we saw in the movie Solo, and he claims that this kid is force sensitive, but that is obviously a con to get the family to shell out some cash. And man, look, this guy got ripped to be in Marvel and Star Wars, and they keep hiding that body under robes and stuff. Come on, the guy lived off egg whites for a year. Let him show off. As Obi-Wan searches the square, he twirls his mustache. Alec Guinness did this in A New Hope, and Ewan McGregor later imitated this gesture at the end of Revenge of the Sith. When Obi-Wan breaks into the space meth lab, he's wearing a mask that looks like Ralph McQuarrie's original design for Luke. Thanks, Grogu, not Baby Yoda, for that observation. The guy who hassles him in the hallway is a Zabrak, the same species as Darth Maul, and Bill Scurry on Twitter points out that this kidnapper is a Feline, just like Prince Zizor's species from Shadows of the Empire. Obi-Wan escapes from the authorities by getting them high, a trick that was pioneered by Cheech and Chong. Uh, you mind if I have a bite of your uh, hot dog? 
Now, during the fight, notice how punching people like really hurts his hands. Even when Ben was fighting in the Clone Wars, he wouldn't have been punching people that much. He just used the Force and his lightsaber, so his soft little Jedi hands wouldn't be used to the pain. He enters Leia's cell, much like Luke does in A New Hope when he name drops Ben. I'm here with Ben Kenobi. And Kenzie Ellen on Twitter points out that the way he bends down is very similar to how her hologram spoke to him in A New Hope. Now, some of you are going to say this is all retcon because Leia acted like she never met Ben in A New Hope. Years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars. But here's the thing. Here, he introduces himself as Ben, not Obi-Wan. And she never actually meets Ben in A New Hope. Maybe if she had, she would have been like, Ben? But also, remember how she responded. I'm here with Ben Kenobi. Ben Kenobi, where is he? Come on. Meaning, maybe she was like, oh my god, you brought that guy who rescued me from kidnappers when I was a kid? Is he related to General Obi-Wan Kenobi, who I have also asked to be here? And I also always thought it never made much sense that Han and Leia named their son Ben, because neither of them really knew Ben Kenobi that well. Damn fool, I knew that you were gonna say that. But now, we know it's because he saved Leia's life. And man, I just love this little Leia. 100 pounds of sass in a 40 pound bag. You seem kind of old and beat up. A little later when she throws him an insult, his reply what? seems to deliberately mimic how he responded to her father saying that he would hunt down Padme's attacker in Attack of the Clones. And you will pay attention to my lead. Why? What? We're introduced to a new Sith Inquisitor. This is called the Fourth Sister. She's totally new, never even appeared in Rebels, and I think she's going to die in this series. Reva mentions that she found links to Bail Organa and Kenobi in the archives. Now, the two of them served on a few missions together in the Clone Wars series, like at Christophus. It could even be that she became aware that Obi-Wan boarded Bail's ship in the last days of the war, but I think it's more likely she accessed the Clone Wars records because they would have been more public. The Grand Inquisitor gives us a hint about Reva's origin. You came to us from the gutter which implies that she was not one of the Padawans at the temple from the series opening scene. Or maybe, to the Inquisitors, being a Jedi Padawan classifies you as coming from the gutter. I went over this in our last video, but basically the Sith Inquisitors are not like full-fledged Sith. They're agents that serve the Sith and have some Force abilities. They were used to help hunt down Jedi Knights, and many of them were actually former Jedi, or were recruited from Imperial citizens who were Force-sensitive. So, maybe Reva really does just want to earn Vader's favor like she says in this episode. Or maybe she's a former Jedi who will end up sacrificing herself to save Obi-Wan. Time will tell, but first, more Arbesh. This wanted sign reads, Wanted, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Offenses, high treason, bounty upon capture. This one says Wampa, that's the monster from Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back that I suspect tastes like chicken. Tastes like chicken. And here the sign says Jawa's Market. And of course, that wanted sign of Obi-Wan Kenobi is a publicity still from Revenge of the Sith. Reva sends out alerts to every bounty hunter in the city, kind of like the power broker did in Madripoor in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This droid in the background that later gets shot in the crotch is a LOM series protocol droid, much like Forlom from The Empire Strikes Back. Back at his headquarters, Kamel is playing solitaire with Sabacc cards, and later when Reva draws information out of his mind, it's very much like Kylo Ren torturing Poe, or what he tried to do to Rey. Don't be afraid. I feel it too. And Freakin' Francis points out that when Ben and Leia escape, there is a Rebel Alliance transport here. It makes sense, because the Rebel fleet was put together from whatever scraps they could find from across the galaxy. More Arabesh. This sign reads Market, Bank, and these two signs read Gungan Snacks, because you know those guys like to eat. This sign reads The Den, Wine, and Sabak. Here we have Market, Jawa, and Arcade. Leia runs past several tanks filled with various creatures, but the only one I recognized was your mom. I loved this rooftop sequence. It really shows what advanced tech like the volume can accomplish. It's totally immersive. Reva's wire work on the rooftops and her force supported parkour, it's just amazing. Obi-Wan is a terrible shot with the blaster because he always hated using those things and is only a good shot at a close range. So uncivilized. And the alien that he's shooting at is called a Tishar from the old Expanded Universe comics. When Leia falls off the building, the shot where she's hanging on directly parallels Luke hanging on in Cloud City and Obi-Wan on Naboo. Actually, also Anakin in Revenge of the Sith. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. I love that the first time Ben uses the Force in this show is to help stop Leia falling. He doesn't use a mind trick or Force push somebody. He simply uses the Force to help save a life. And it seems like he's really out of practice at using it. Obi-Wan goes to hide in a cargo ship, which he did to land on Naboo in The Phantom Menace. Oh, and he hid in a cargo hold in A New Hope and also hid in a closet in Revenge of the Sith. This guy never has to pee. I never want to leave this cargo port. Uh-oh. Gotta take a whiz. He gets all wistful when Leia reminds him of her mother, Padme. You just remind me of someone. She was a leader. She died a long time ago. And Reva entering the cargo area gave me strong warrior vibes. Obi-Wan. Come out to play. 
And this whole sequence where he's hiding from Reva is a direct parallel to Luke and Vader's duel in Return of the Jedi. He hides while she taunts him, her red saber glowing in the background. Even the dialogue is similar. Your fear betrays you. Your thoughts betray you. And just like in Jedi, the bad guy is able to read the good guy's emotions. Except in Jedi, Vader learns that Luke has a twin sister. Your feelings have now betrayed her too. But here, it's Obi-Wan who learns that Vader is alive. Anakin Skywalker is alive. For me, the biggest surprise here is that Reva knew that Vader was Anakin Skywalker. Now, it could be that this was a fact that was known among the Inquisitors, but I doubt it. In the novel Thrawn Alliances, Vader mentally refers to his time as Anakin as the Jedi. Tarkin and Thrawn both suspect that Anakin became Vader, but it's never confirmed. Now, maybe Reva found video evidence of Anakin in the temple while she was searching the records. After all, Obi-Wan did find footage of Palpatine giving Vader orders. This would also support my theory that she was a youngling at the temple because she would have known Anakin Skywalker on sight. Another big shock was that Reva kills the Grand Inquisitor. Which explains why this guy looks so different from how he appeared in Rebels. Rebels takes place five years after this, so this is probably a new Inquisitor. Maybe we'll actually get to see him played by Jason Isaacs in this show. And yes, both Inquisitors could just happen to be from Utapal. Now, a Sith killing their superior to take his place is pretty much what the Sith do, and I'm guessing that Reva would probably be promoted for it, except that she'll blame the murder on Obi-Wan. Now, afterwards, Obi-Wan has to wrestle with this revelation while he's on a ship fleeing from a planet after barely escaping with his life. This is just like Luke's escape from Bespin after learning Vader was his father. <laughs> And that scene included the two-frame crossfade from Luke to Vader, very similar to this hard cut from Obi-Wan to Vader here. The two-frame crossfade showed a connection between Vader and Luke, but here it's a hard cut because it's showing that there is a distance between the former master and his apprentice. And this is the returning Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader recuperating in his back to tank like we saw in Rogue One. Christensen bulked up for this role and it shows. Clint Coffey also pointed out to me that when we see Vader without his helmet in Return of the Jedi, he has this massive scar on his head. But here in the back to tank, no scar. So maybe he doesn't get that scar until his duel with Obi-Wan in this series. Well, that's all the Easter eggs we found, but if you found any, let us know in the comments below or you can at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, welcome to the store. Please subscribe and be sure to smash that bell. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.